I seriously need to learn how to position my camera properly before I click the record button. I just zoomed it out. Pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> anyway, hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So, in the last two months or so, I've been putting in a lot of time and effort into learning about various substrate blends. Admittedly, mostly for isopods, but I have been doing it for other things too. Now in just the last two weeks alone, I've put in over 100 hours of research time. I know, I'm a bit of a nerd, right? <laughs> but I've been really, really enjoying it. I've just found it fascinating. So what I'm actually gonna be doing today is rehousing two adult female tarantulas into what's actually an older substrate blend. But let me just explain, where have I put it? Here it is. So this blend here is actually my old isopod blend that I made last year. If you've been following me for a while and followed me on the old Bug Realms channel, you would have seen me make this blend. Now let's just have a quick look at it and I'll explain why I'm gonna try this isopod blend in with two adult female tarantulas. So first of all, let's look at it. It is absolutely chock-a-block with organic material, making this blend perfect for a bioactive setup. Now we're not making a bioactive setup because I don't really have my lighting on all the time. You'll see on the shelves here, the lights are on for filming. I don't, ugh, dirty hands. I don't actually keep the lights on all the time. So for me growing plants, it's just not gonna happen. But I needed to make a very organic rich soil for my isopods. Now minus a few chunks of bark that I will be taking out for when I put this in for the tarantulas, I really think that this will make excellent burrowing substrate. Now you might be thinking, whoa, 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 okay, this is very light, this is very fluffy, but why do we compact our substrates down for the tarantulas? Because they feel better on more solid ground. That is true, that is true. But there's nothing to say that this cannot be compacted down and leave a nice solid surface still. But when the tarantula is to burrow, and to dig, it will make it nice, easy, and light. It's not gonna collapse in on a burrow because of course burrows are silk lined, preventing that from happening. So I thought having this nice, easy, light blend that's really easy to dig in might even encourage burrowing within some of my tarantula species. Now this substrate can be kept more arid and dry, and it can also be kept humid and moist, so it can work as an all-round substrate. So I've picked two tarantulas for this job. First of all is my Tiltacattle Kallenbergi adult female. So she has a slightly drier enclosure. I don't really water the enclosure down, I just overfill the water dish from time to time. She doesn't really like the moist side of the enclosure. She tends to steer away from the water dish at most times, but of course it's gotta be there for her to drink. And the second is our adult female, Terranopelma sazamai. Now the sazamai, does like it a bit moister, she does like a damper substrate, she sticks to the damper sides of her enclosure. They're both in really large enclosures, they're having a slight downsize in fact to go into our mantis den not for mantis range enclosures rather than the big bulky slightly too tall ones that we currently have them in. Now the reason I've chose these tarantulas as well is the Kallenbergi doesn't burrow at all. Zilch. So I'll be interested to see if she does do any kind of burrowing at all with this substrate. And the Pelma sazamai only has made burrows about three inches deep at most, and I'm curious to see if she does more with this substrate. Now her burrow, she I made her lots of kind of entrances and exits that you'll see in a moment, and she kind of just filled most of it in and sticks to one tiny space in that enclosure. Will this substrate change their behaviors? Will they be happier in this substrate or will it make no difference at all? Well, that's what this experiment is for. So I promise you we'll crack straight on in a minute. I will stop talking. 
But this is something I really want to figure out here at Bug Realms because if I do notice a significant difference in behaviour to be more natural behaviour, then we will start changing out a lot of the other substrates. If I see no change, we're going to work on another blend. I've gone substrate mad, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to figure out some of the best job substrates for all of the different inverts I keep here today. So without further ado, which one shall we do first? Kallenbergi's out, let's do her first. So this folks is her home, plain and simple home. Her water dish is this side, because as I said, she does not like to steer near where I overflow it so much, and she resides just in here. Now she was actually out, but she ran as I moved this enclosure. And you can see she didn't even fill in the back of this hide. This hide goes all the way through, as you can see. And I expected her to kind of fill that bit in, and she didn't, she made some webbing, you can just see the edge of her feet there but she never actually filled it in with dirt which to me was a bit of a strange behavior because it's still quite light and airy at the back of this enclosure and i just found out really really interesting she did not move the dirt over so we're going to hopefully have a change of behavior for that but before we can put her in and take her out we need to set up the new enclosure so here is the enclosure with the substrate layer in now I'm just going to add a different bit of bark in here. We're actually already going to bury the back of this bark, um, but that doesn't mean to say we're not going to be able to notice any behavioral changes. I'm just going to dig this out a little bit. It was just a, a better piece that I thought to suit her. Now I'm going to give her quite a bit of space in here because she is quite a big girl. Now we'll do some finishing touches before we put her in. So here we are. All I've done is add in a layer of dry moss to the back. Now I will be popping a water dish at the front on this side, but I'd like to get her in first. So it's a very basic setup and I wanted to keep it basic because I wanted to see what she will do with that substrate. Now this is quite a large opening. So whether she will enclose that in a little bit, I don't know, we will soon find out. Will she tear the moss up, move that around? Who knows? But I am really excited to see her behavior down the line in this enclosure. So let's cup her and get her in. Now she is a bit of a bolty girl. She doesn't like to be disturbed. I haven't moved this hide in a long time. There's an old malt down there in fact as well. Chill, chill, chill. Let's take a look at her before we cup her up. So there she is. She is a big girl. She is bulky. She is quick. She's more a runner than she is a fighter. And you can see her previous molt just there. Beautiful girl, absolutely beautiful. So, let's get her in. Hmm, do we use the round one? Do we use a square one? Don't know, let's figure it out as we go along. Right, I'm gonna attempt the square one first, or rectangular one, because I think this will fit in the doorway a little bit easier in the new enclosure. old moats getting in the way. There we go. Don't be stubborn. There we go. We've got her in the tub just there. Okay, so. Tilted the tub. Just gotta hope she actually comes out now. Come on, girl. 
Okay, stub and go. Hasn't gone down yet. I think she likes the security, the darker corner here. I've tried to maneuver her towards her hide. Okay, so I've placed her tub now above her hide. She is just here. I'm actually not gonna coax her out, folks, because I want her to do it in her own time. I want her to feel safe. And we're gonna move straight on to the Sazmise enclosure. So here we have the Sazmise one, exactly the same again. A bit more substrate. I've got this a bit more sloped at the back to give more burrowing room as the Sazmise, as I said, does do some burrowing, whereas the Kallenbergi haven't been doing any. So I actually wanna use the cork back that's in the original Sazmise hide. So I'm actually gonna put this one down for a minute. Whoop and we will have a look in her current enclosure. So this is her home. You see what I mean about tunnel networks? This one got completely filled in. Um, this one she does use and she just sits down here. So not very deep at all. And she doesn't go any deeper than that. She's got a water dish over here and she's got one of them cool spongy mushroom things just here. I'm gonna take that out because I'd quite like to use that again. So, I'd rather use this bit of bark, but I also don't want to disturb her. I don't want to, whoa, saw some movement. I'm gonna need both my hands for this. Ah, okay, I actually think she was a, a level down from this. She wasn't in this piece of bark at all. So we'll probably use that one. It's all right, girl. So she's actually started to crawl. No, 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 no. That awkward moment where you get the cup, but it doesn't quite make the corner. <laughs> Little bugger, isn't she? Right, let me maneuver this better so we can get her in a new home with that bit of bark there. And we have her in the cup. You see her? She's got a bit of bulk to her as well. Now, pop this. Oh. Now it's quite possible she can tip this over, so I need to be kind of quick with uh, the housing. You stay. Now I've got to try and make as little vibration as I can. I don't want to startle her in the cup. Now, being a bit of bark she's already used before, I think she should settle in quite easy. Now I want to add a bit of extra substrate into this enclosure over the Kallenbergis because as I said, she will actually burrow. So this is her home designed. She's got her old leaf litter, her old moss, nice deep hide with lots of burrowing space. It might not look it, but as you see, it raises along the back here and she can kind of pull from the front to raise it further back if she wishes. And she's got her mushroom and that's her just there. So we'll see if we can get her to come through okay. And then we'll see if that Kallenbergi has come out of her box. Now I'm gonna hope this cup fits in here. Yes, right over our hide there. Now this one actually does have holes in it for me to maneuver her downwards. All right, just go back, back it up, back it up, back it up. Oh, she's gone in by herself now. Beautiful. There she is. I know you didn't get to see much of her in that cup, but you should be able to make out 
those beautiful blues now awesome really really cool okay pop in her water dish I'll fill that one up in just a momento let's check where the Kallenberg is and she's out cool and there she is in the corner so you can see that although I downsized in height we don't need the height for these terrestrials she's still got plenty of space she is a beautiful girl and there's her water dish her water dish is already full I'm not going to overflow it this time because as I said the substrate isn't as dry as what she's used to and this is them on my shelf we've got one more empty one to do on this shelf not sure what we'll put in that one yet most likely one of our ever growing for myctopus because they're getting pretty big right now so there we are an old substrate blend i made but trying it with something new like our tarantulas now i have no doubt that they'll be comfortable in there of course this is a very similar mix to your pre-bought bioactive style substrates so i know they'll be fine but will it change their behaviors who knows that's something i'll have to update you guys with in the future now I know I didn't update you with the unique animal unboxing and the reason being was I actually set a day to film that and it kind of went horribly wrong. So I'll fill you in very very quickly now. Crab is doing absolutely fine, the thorny cricket doing absolutely fine. The snail was a DOA, um, within two days the shell had gone completely light there was never any movement the snail did not come out of the shell at all pretty sure it was dead on arrival and my favorite one of all the white wolf spider sorry I've got a bit of substrate in my eye I shouldn't rub it when I've been dealing with spider hands um, the white wolf spider actually died on the day I was going to record this I'm not sure what happened, it went into a death curl like dehydration, but it did have water in there. So, I somehow messed up on that one. It was cool as well. It was always on the move every time I fed it. It created this tiny little open burrow where you could just see it hunched inside there. And then when it came to the day of actually recording, I found it eh. So that's why you haven't had a lovely awesome update video on those But I mean I can show you the crab and the thorny cricket again another time But I think this video has gone on for a bit too long today So thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen Let me know in the comments below if you use any kind of unique substrates for your tarantulas or any of your other animals And I'll see you in the next one. Take care Bye-bye